Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Now, as far as a demo here, something I wanted to mention and show you guys is just a very simple way that we can do an AJAX style application without having to deal with the XML HTTP request object. So what I'm going to do is navigate over to Visual Studio here and let me close all my current windows. Here we go. What I'm going to do with this little website, you can see I'm dealing with the website and it is a .NET 3.5 website I just want to take advantage of AJAX and as you guys are going to see of course the AJAX controls are automatically available in the toolbox because I am on .NET 3.5. I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new web page to this website and notice it's going to be called default4.aspx this will be the language of my code behind file C sharp and I'll just go ahead and click add now right off the bat I'm looking at the source code view you can see I've got the form I've got the div tags and over on the left side I have these Ajax extensions over at the top and of course something that I must always put onto a page whenever I'm doing Ajax programming is a script manager control so I'm just going to drag and drop him just inside the actual form like that I'm going to blow away the div tags I don't need those guys but something else I want to put on here is an actual update panel Okay. Now the update panel, any controls I put inside of this update panel will automatically um, do AJAX behavior when calling methods that are existing in the code behind file. Now there's a bug within this update panel that you need to be aware of. I always like to point this out to my students. For example, if I just go ahead and drag and drop a button control inside this update panel, it's not going to work. Watch out for this bugaboo. Drag and drop a button right into the update panel notice that first off this control doesn't have an ID it doesn't have an ID attribute like the update panel does or this guy here every control in an ASP.NET web page must have a unique ID also it it's doesn't have uh, some of the other properties we might be used to seeing well here's what you must do before you go dragging and dropping a button control into there it must have this special content template element and inside of here is where you can go ahead and drag a button and a text box. Now, before I go ahead and add some controls into this update panel, I'm going to show you the behavior of a standard ASP.NET web page that's not making use of any AJAX. So I'll drag and drop a button control onto the form. Notice it has a nice ID and everything. And I'll drag and drop a label control onto the form as well. And based on the user clicking on this button I'm gonna go ahead and set the label equal to the current time so I'll just drag it or double click the button control and I'll say label one dot text equals date time dot now dot to long time string like that makes sense now when I go ahead and view this in a browser I'll go ahead and save the changes of course and I'm going to shrink it down a little bit in size you can see that when I click on the button it's going ahead and updating it with the current time Did you notice this green scroll bar going across the bottom right there in the status bar that snake is going across every single time because it's having to regenerate the entire page at the server side albeit well, all we have is a button and a label control or really what we have is an HTML input control with another input control but mind you at the server side there's a lot going on remember we're going through IIS's uh, authentication and authorization process we're jumping in ASP.NET and its own authentication and authorization we're recreating the entire page object and of course page inherits from control and web control we're handling all those different events and all the different controls get to subscribe to those events and then they get to render out all the HTML and then we're resetting all the actual state of the controls using view state as well and then finally sending that entire generated page back off to the client as HTML for the browser to render once again that's why this is so expensive right having to go ahead and um, re recreate this entire page every time but if I move those two controls 
inside of that update panel, if I move this button control and this label inside the update panel, you're going to see how the performance goes up dramatically. So I'll just go ahead and select these three controls, cut, and then paste so that they're inside of my update panel. Boy, the indentation is really sad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little button here that says format the whole document. There we go. That looks nice and pretty now. All right. Save all. And view this in the browser once again. And it looks the same as it did before, but one thing you'll notice is you don't see that green snake going cruising across the bottom of my status bar. The progress bar is no longer appearing because now a very simple request is going out from the client to the server side using a special object called the XML HTTP request object, the one Ajax object. Remember, next time you're at a, a bookstore or a library or wherever, and you're looking at a bunch of books and you see a whole mess of them on Ajax programming, remember that all those Ajax programming books are based on that one solitary object. And he only has a few different methods and properties that you're going to use for Ajax programming, making requests or posts to the server. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. <laughs>